Uh, yeah, so thank you for the introduction. My name is Niels, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Waterloo. And uh, I'm going to present you our paper that was done in collaboration with Microsoft and these co-authors. Uh, and the project was on analyzing leakage of personally identifiable information in language models. So what exactly does that mean? So assume you have a data set, like let's assume you have emails, then we have um, the content of these emails, uh, and we have the sender of these emails. So we refer to them as about whom an email is and by whom an email was provided. Now we can see here that in the email we have some PII, some personally identifiable information, such as John Doe, which is a name, London, or, uh, or organizations, or jobs even. And, um, and now what we want to do is we want to train a language model on this data. And then we want to provide that model to users via an API access. So they can prompt, similar to how ChatGPT works, and the model generates some text. And now the question is, does that text reveal something about the personal information that's inside of that data? So here in this case, I've marked up some of the generated data, and some of these PII that the model is generating are going to be real, so they're going to actually appear in the training data, whereas others are not real, uh, and they have been fabricated. So we're looking at three attacks, essentially. So the first attack is going to be PII extraction. Uh, and in the PI extraction, the goal is simple. I just want to have some sampling strategy from the model, and I want to extract all the PII that it generates, and then I want to be able to distinguish between real and fabricated PII. The second and third attacks are going to be reconstruction-based attacks, which Santiago just introduced, essentially. Um, and in this case, we want to associate PII with a sentence from the training data. So in this case, the attacker has a sentence that's actually occurring in the training data, but it's masked. So they don't have one particular piece of information in that data, which is the masked token. So they can use the access to the language model to then try to impute that missing mask. And how do they do that, essentially? So in reconstruction, we assume no auxiliary information about the mask. So all possible PII could be imputed here. So all that the attacker can do is they can filter out tokens or words that are not PII. For example, here, a man. Whereas in inference, we have some set of candidates, so some background information, which they can use to then just, so they only have to decide, is it John Doe or, or Theo Peric in this example. So an inference attacker is much, much stronger because of this information. So what can the defender do? So they can do two things. They can either change their training algorithm, uh, for example, by using differential privacy, or they can change the training data, so data curation, data sanitation, by PII scrubbing. Now, there, there, are some there are some problems with both approaches. So with differential privacy, what we can see here is a perplexity graph. So this measures how good is my model on the data. And I've plotted like these data points. They represent individual different training configurations for these models. And you want to have a low perplexity. So you want, ideally, a good model would be in the bottom left corner of this figure. Now, what we can see is actually that a model trained without DP that is very small is much better than a model trained with DP that's very large. That's perhaps not very surprising. But there's a cost that comes in, in the utility. And there's a fundamental problem that uh, was alluded to earlier by Santiago, which is that in record level DP, we have duplication across records of these PII. So in this case, it's unclear how to exactly uh, defend against this, because differential privacy only protects by whom a data, set, a data element, a data record was provided, but not about whom it contains information. So there's a mismatch between what is differentially private and what's more colloquially known as private. And so, um, so you can mitigate this with group level differential privacy where you zoom out from an individual record and you look at groups. But then how do we choose these group sizes? Uh, and also there's a, there's a high impact on the model's utility. So let's look at the other kind of defense that somebody can do, which is scrubbing. Again, we pick up our <laughs> graph. And we can see that 
again, we have this problem that scrubbing has a deleterious impact on the model's utility. So what can we do? How do these two defenses complement each other, or are they even redundant to one each other? So does differential privacy already protect from leakage? Let's find out. <laughs> so what's really missing is a method to measure and optimize the privacy utility trade-off for this kind of PII leakage. And that's what we're going to look at. So existing work, so this is just a subset of the existing work. It's not all of it by, by any means. But they've looked at any sort of memorization. So just memorization of, uh, studies through canaries, through n-grams, or sequences, irrespective of whether it contains private information. Uh, and then recent work by Huang et al, they looked at PII leakage in pre-trained models. And none of, these, uh, none of these papers have looked at the interplay of defenses, which we were looking at. And none of these papers has looked at how can we formalize the leakage with security games. And so that's what we did. I'm not going to present these. Uh, but if you want to uh, check them out or do a study yourself, look at them in our paper, please. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going, instead, I'm going to present a reconstruction attack, just a simple one-case attack to show what an attacker uh, uh, can actually do. So again, we have the sentence, we have a prompt, and the language model. And now uh, a naive attacker would just autocomplete using the model, the sentence. And then the first few tokens that come out, that would be their prediction. In this case, they would see there is no leakage because the model hasn't autocompleted the correct mask. Now, Really what you want to do is you want to optimize the perplexity across the entire sentence. So not just using the, the information in the prefix, but using the information contained in the entire sentence. Meaning that the suffix, everything that comes after the mask, confers information about the mask. The problem is with autoregressive models like GPT that we study, you cannot naively do that because they only allow attending to everything that came before but not after. So uh, uh, an attack that we implemented is, first you sample candidates, you tag, so you, you sample the model, you generate sentences, then you tag all the PII that appear in these sentences, and then you test them, uh, 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 the perplexity of the entire sentence in the model, you get some score, that is essentially your attack, and then in this case, the highest score would be the predicted sample, the predicted PII that would uh, impute the mask. Now with this, attack, and I omitted some details which are relevant, but for the sake of the presentation, I didn't put them here, we can get massive uh, improvements in the leakage in the PII reconstruction. For this data set, which, was, uh, which is ECHR, which is a law data set, we measure 3x improvement over um, the naive uh, PII extraction attack. Um, sorry, the PII reconstruction attack. Now we look at, we also have results on the PII extraction. So what we see here is we actually compare a differentially private model with a non-differentially private model. And we see that also the differentially private model still leaks PII. So we can actually extract them. It's not just theoretical. We actually can demonstrate that they can be extracted with epsilon equals 8. <laughs> uh, and then there's also a potential for high precision low recall attacks where an attacker can also uh, uh, get a precision of about 7% percent with DP models and much higher in undefended models, of course. And finally, we studied a lot of factors, but the ones that I'm presenting here is the token length. So there is a limit on the, the, on the uh, GPT-2 model on the token length of leaked PII. So anything, like we never observed leakage of, um, of PII with more than eight tokens, essentially. <clears throat> now, to summarize our results, what we see is that undefended models are highly vulnerable to all, all sorts of attack, of course. Um, DP bounds but does not prevent the leakage of PII, meaning that DP and scrubbing likely, DP needs to be supplemented with some other sort of defense. And the, the, the quest is essentially open on what kind of defenses and how do you optimize the privacy utility trade-off. And scrubbing harms utility and has other flaws, such as it can miss PII, it's context dependent. It's very hard to accurately anonymize text data sets. So what can we do? <laughs> yeah, uh, so that's essentially the question. And we just demonstrated that there is actually uh, this leakage and that, that it is real. We can actually get that out of these models. Now, the paper has a lot more results, and I hope you have the time to check it out. Um, 
And that's it. And yeah, thank you. That's the quote. My co-authors, big thank you to them. Uh, uh, and the paper and uh, everything for you to check out. Thank you. Thank you so much, Niels, for this uh, gra great presentation. Uh, do we have any, any questions from the audience? Okay. Um, so when you talk about differential pricing with epsilon eight, do you think that epsilon eight is an appropriate mm. value? I mean, because it's too high here, so you can tell that's no differential privacy there. Yeah, that's a great question. That's a great question. So in our paper, we do motivate why we use epsilon equals eight to study the leakage in our system, which is we find counterparts like real systems that are actually being deployed that use this epsilon value in practice. However, I mean, since we can extract data, likely it's not a good uh, uh, value and you should use lower values. However, then you run even more into the problem of destroying the model's utility. So in our study, we looked at fine-tuned models. And um, here, if you use epsilon equals 4 or epsilon equals 2 or even uh, lower values, you're going to see essentially models that perform absolutely bad on, on, on these data sets. So likely, what we show is that even with differential privacy, like epsilon equals 8, you can show this leakage. If you go lower, likely you cannot show this leakage anymore. However, it also deletes the model's utility. <clears throat> um, very nice work. Uh, I actually have a question. Uh, like, um, because um, after GPT-3, we have instructed GPT, uh, I just uh, um, uh, saw that you have conducted experiments on GPT-2, which um, may not have such um, protections. So um, how about instructed GPT? Have you done mm. uh, experiments regarding instructed GPT and to check out whether they have actually um, improved their privacy protection? Also, again, a good question. So we have not. It's actually hard to imagine at this point, but the, when we wrote the paper, which was, uh, I believe, last August, ChatGPT actually wasn't out yet. So by the time we submitted, I believe still ChatGPT wasn't, wasn't out or it just came out. So we really didn't do that. However, there is a lot of discussion and very interesting uh, studies on how OpenAI, or you know, these companies in general, prevent the leakage of sensitive information. And I, I mean, there's a lot to talk about this. I, I'm happy to take this afterwards. Um, but unfortunately, also a lot is unknown. We don't actually know uh, how they protect leakage of information from their data sets. We don't even know which data they're trained on. So it, 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 I imagine it would be hard to study in a real setting, um, but, it, but there's ways to replicate uh, these models, like the alpaca models, what, this, uh, uh, where you could study that. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Niels. This is a great talk. Yeah. Okay.